Hello and welcome back fellow coin collectors. So my name is Glenn and today well I'm going to do a few coin series so I've got some coins there in which I show a bulk lot of coins that I actually purchased and we just see if it's actually worth the value of uh, what I purchased it for. So I've got this lot for $20 so it was $15 plus $5 postage. So let's get into it uh the first coins i'm going to have a look at is uh, the australian coins and they are both pennies issued in the 1920s so these are the mckinnell designs they have the denomination commonwealth of australia the date and on the back we just have the effigy of george uh, the fifth so these were issued from 1911 to 1936 and then they changed the design to the kangaroo. So this one is dated 1922 and in 1922 they issued 12,697,000 and this coin on this side looks like it's in very fine condition as well as this side very fine condition. So how I usually grade these is this patch of the actual crown and the rest of the crown. It's pretty worn, but you can see uh, the diamond still, and I can see one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can still see six pearls. They're just the dots in between the diamonds. And generally, if they're a lot more worn, it, the grade goes lower. If I could have seen eight diamonds, I mean, eight pearls, uh, that probably would have graded higher, but then uh, there would have been less wear on the rest of this coin. So this one's probably worth eh, uh, just basically looking. The sole value is probably about two to three dollars. It's not really worth much there. The next coin we have is a penny from 1920, and the first thing I notice or I look for on these coins for 1920 are dots. And this one has a dot above the bottom scroll. You can also get one to dots below bottom scroll, a dot above top scroll, and there's also one with one above and below uh, the actual scrolls. So that's quite a lot of varieties. So I would actually class those as a variety. It seems like that those dots were intentional. But some people do class them as errors as not being intentional. So the entire mintage for 20, uh, 1920 is uh, 9,041,000. And if uh, you look at Nimsta, you can see that the dot above, uh, up, yeah, dot above bottom scroll. Only 3% of people who actually have this coin have uh, this type. So that's the best statistics that we can actually find on how many of these coins are out there. Uh, but it doesn't say how many people actually have it. Which will be grouse and they'll like, mm, I don't know, a million people have this coin and only 3% of those million uh, have this variety. But... Some people probably don't even know this variety. And this one's probably in fine condition, as you can see. It's well worn. You can only see two of the diamonds. One, two. This diamond's pretty worn. But I can still see six pearls. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so I'll probably just price this at about five bucks. So, you know. Not too bad, that's just what I've seen on eBay. Okay. The next coin we have, I'll leave my favourite coin to last, is a 1901, one cent from Ceylon, which is currently Sri Lanka. This one has bronze disease. So, it has the actual copper sulphide, looks like. Uh, that's actually eating the coin. And I will grade this one as fine. It's a well-worn coin, uh, but the mintage is only a bit over 1 million. So this coin 
they're not that popular in Australia. Obviously, Sri Lanka's a poor country, so coin collecting is not a big thing over there. Uh, so basically, not many people are actually collecting these. So this coin, probably about a dollar or two in that grade. Then we have a Chinese coin. So this is a 20 cent. And as you can see from the scratching, someone's actually cleaned this in the past. So, and on this side, we have, in Chinese, what's on this side. So this is a Guangdong, that's Guangdong, it's a province in southern China and borders uh, Hong Kong. So Shenzhen is part of this, it's 20 cents. So this is uh, one fifth of a yuan. So when yuan equals 100 cents equals, and one cent is equal to 10, 10 fen. So one yuan is equivalent to 1,000 fen. And if we look at, this is also equivalent to jiao. So if you know Chinese currency, 20 cents is equal to two jiao. So this was a currency up until 1949 when actually had to revalue it because of hyperinflation. So this is a 5.35 gram silver coin and it's only 50% silver and it's 24 millimeters. So we have a date of 1912 to 1924. So they don't have the Western date. If you go over here, it has Republic of China and it has a date. So this is the second year of the Republic of China. So that was the uh, first year is 1911. So this one is uh, 1913. Okay, sorry, the first year is 1912. Uh, the second year is 1913. And this had a mintage of uh, 100 million coins. So it's fairly common. And probably in this condition, I would say 10 to $20. That's what I see them sell for. So if you're not too sure on the actual sell price, uh, go to eBay and look up what coins have sold for. Now, the silver value of this is only $3.30. So if you can get it for $10 to $15, then uh, you're probably doing pretty good. You're not really going to get these for bullion value. So this is probably the lower value of these coins because they've actually had all that scratching on that side. Okay, then the next coin we have is a Brazilian coin. So this is probably in very fine to EF condition. You can see a lot of the actual dots on the crown are worn. So that's how I'm going to grade this coin. It's a bit harder to grade around this side. Unless a lot of these are actually worn. And on this side we have uh, Petrius II. And this is dated 1969. And it has... Uh, Someone scratch RM into the bottom of the coin, which is a pity. And I would grade on this side based on these mint marks, especially this one, as well as the beard. You can see there's a lot of uh, light wear on the actual beard as well as his hair. So a lot, a lot of these finer detailed parts of the coin is what you've graded at. So this. 20 rays, it wasn't the smallest coin in circulation, that was the 10 rays. So this is a low value coin even at the time. In 1869, there is no mintage figures. 1868 had 90 million. And the minister said 25% of people who own this coin have 1968. 1969 has about 87%. Uh, so, and also, 1869 is two varieties. So the one with the dot after RS, so this is raised, is minted in Belgium. And there is another coin, which is the scarcer one, uh, without the dot, that was minted in Brazil. So this actually, that's the coat of arms of Brazil. And this was a empire at the time. 
And it looks like, no. So these coins are actually not too hard to get in Australia. Not many people want them. Uh, but 20 rays in this condition, you know, probably about 10 to $20. I do see some for sale for about $40, but I don't think they're going to sell. It's not a scarce coin, and pretty much you can still get them in high grade still. So, this coin, as well as that coin, probably makes up for what I actually purchased it for. That's the uh, $20. These two, so if you sell these for $10 each, you're pretty much making it up. So for fifteen dollars, oh well, you're making a profit. But so far, these coins here, yeah, probably are worth more than the actual twenty dollars. So I've got ten, twenty, yeah, thirty, yeah, probably thirty all up so far. That's just conservative. So the next coin we have is Egypt, and this one has a frozen date of twelve seventy seven. And the top date is the actual regal year. This just says minted in Egypt. Uh, so this is regal year 7. So if you take... So this is a 1966 coin. No, not 1966. 1866. So you take 7 years away. 1859 should be that date system. And you say 10 para. So the denomination is on this side. It's just down below. Be uh, Lodi Tugra, so it's the Tugra, just the name in the Ottoman uh, uh, Emperor. Well, do they call it Emperor? Sultan, yeah, that's what they should actually call it. And it's in Arabic. So, well, maybe that could be the actual, uh, let me have a look. Abdulaziz, so that should actually be the Egyptian king, not the actual Ottoman, because uh, obviously it's not in Turkish. So there are no mintage figures for these, but if you go to nah, 1866 in Numistar, 13% of people who have uh, the coins from 1863 to 1869 have this date. Seems to be, you know, evenly spread out all the dates. So I reckon the mintage figures for all the coins are actually quite similar. And if you wanted to buy this coin, see that they sell them for, you know, probably 10 to $20. There are some for about $25 and $30, but I don't think those ones will sell. Uh, this one's actually quite warm. So I'd say conservatively, probably about $10 roughly. But with my price values, uh, they do fluctuate. Because sometimes there might be some hype over a certain coin. Like people might get excited on Facebook about these 1920 pennies. Trying to get a set or whatever. And that would actually bump the price up. Okay, the next coin we have is a Spanish coin from 1870. So this is when they introduced the uh, peseta. So these are two peseta coins, not the highest value. Uh, but... This is a 10 gram coin of 83.5% silver, it's 27 millimeters in diameter, and it has, so this woman represents Hispaniola, so the actual peninsula in which, um, what well, that landmass that Spain is on, and it has that day, but that's a frozen day, so you actually get the date, so this is what Franco actually got his dates from. In these stars, it does have the date. And this one is, it's a bit hard to tell, but it's 1874. I did look at it. Yeah, that does look like a four. So, this coin was uh, minted between 19, 1869 and 19... Uh, 74, so this is the last year, 1974, they had a mintage of 14,892,000. Well, I would say a majority of those coins were remelted in later uh, years. So at the top of the front of the coin, which has the coat of arms, 
your denomination, peseta. We the E, I believe that that is the uh, mint engraver. Uh, M for Madrid, so it's the mint mark of where it was actually minted. And up the top we have 100 pieces per uh, one kilogram of uh, metal. And so that means, yeah, 100 coins. Hmm. This is a bit strange. 10 grams. So that's... Uh, I actually have not thought about uh, that at all. So that would make... Yeah. You got a thousand grams. Uh, divided by 100 equals 10. So obviously it's... That doesn't represent silver. Represents uh, silver and the other elements in the actual coin. So these coins I see they sell for yeah, probably about 25 to $50. So this one, uh, this one itself probably makes up for the $20 that I've spent. The last coin I got, so this is one of my favorites. And this is a Austrian coin from 1816. But there's a caveat. This is a frozen date coin. So that means they minted these up until I think 1849. And uh, there's quite a few mint marks. So a new Mr. Yeah, so 1849 when they actually issued a another coin. Sorry, I mean 1851 is when they actually issued the next one kreutzer so this one is the a mint mark which is for vienna so this side just says the denomination with the reef date and mint mark on this side we have the coat of arms of austria and okay Österreich scheidemunds so that means that uh that's just says austria scheidemunds means it's it doesn't have its value in a uh, metal and this is a copper coin of 8.69 grams and 26.6 millimeters in diameter. So the other mints are, so it's Kremica, which is currently in Aust uh, Slovakia, I mean. Alba Julia in Romania, Bayera Mare in, also in Romania, Ustravita in Romania, and this small lint, small knits. Oh, I don't know. Yes, Smolnitz is the German. Smolnik is probably the Slovakian. So that makes one, two, three, four, five, six mint marks you can find for these coins. And the only mintage figures they have are Kremica, which had a mintage of uh, about 54 and a half million. So quite a lot of coins. And this one's supposed to be more common. So obviously, I reckon there's probably at least. Uh, 100 to 200 million of these in well, minted for circulation a lot of them survive and it's a fairly common coin to uh, get on eBay so these ones probably sell in this grade yeah, between uh, I'd say 10 and 30 dollars and the reason why I say two values is because uh, Different sellers sell for different values depending on the currency and how common the coin is in their country. In Australia, these are not too common, so these are probably more mid range. Uh, go to another country, go to Austria, they should be very common. So, I hope this helps you with your coin collecting. Bit of a long video, but I don't care, this is my channel and have an awesome coin and bank note collecting time. Uh, if you have any questions about these coins, uh, leave it down below. And I'll endeavor to try and answer them for you. Thank you and goodbye.